new modern four place airplanes that cost nearly a half a million dollars. Doesn't that seem astronomical? Unfortunately, it's simply reality. If you're in the market for a new certified four place single, you better be prepared to spend half a million bucks. Here's a few examples. A base Cessna 172 costs $432,000. Or a Piper Archer LX, that starts at $450,000. Or if you really wanna make the jump, a Cirrus SR20 starts in around $586,000. In any of these cases, tack on taxes, delivery, and other ancillary charges, and you're sure to be over a half a million dollars. But maybe it's not so crazy to think there just might be better options. Before we talk options, I'd like to thank you for being here on My Time to Fly. If it's your first visit to the channel, you found a place where we explore the real world of general aviation. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more general aviation content and come along for upcoming adventures in the Mooney. Today, we're gonna to take a look at an airplane that might be more capable than any of the new planes I mentioned before and more capable than my Mooney. And it could save you big dollars over the life of the airplane. Beyond the initial cost, you'll be able to leverage lower operating costs over the life of the airplane. How you ask? Well, there are three ways you could save money. One, you can perform your own maintenance. If you're the initial constructor of an airplane and you get the proper certificate, you can maintain your airplane. Second, you get earlier access to new technology. Things like electronic ignition and aftermarket fuel injection that either is vaguely available in the certified world or just not available at all. And third, you get the ability to use non-certified components. In a lot of cases, those non-certified components are the same or uh, maybe just slightly different than the certified version, but save you big dollars. Here's an example, and these prices are right off of Aircraft Spruce, which is probably the biggest aviation parts dealer in the world. The example is a Garmin G5, which is a very popular uh, aftermarket digital instrument. Um, the certified G5 costs $2,395, while the non-certified version is $1,340, $1,000 less, and it's the same part. So you've probably figured out by now, today we are talking about going experimental, or what some might call amateur home-built airplanes. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the most well-known brands in the experimental community. Brands like Vans and their very popular RV lineup. Sling Aircraft, which is growing quickly with their in-demand TSI, like the one found in that video up here. And of course, let's not forget about Kit Fox, SunX, Rands, Glass Air, Cub Crafters, and the list goes on and on and on. It's very clear to me, if you have a reasonable mission, there is an airplane you can build yourself that will excel in that mission while delivering a better value for money than a certified airplane. Today, we're gonna to explore an example using my mission. My mission is a four place cross country machine, something I can comfortably transport my wife and two young daughters around it. Although I love the Mooney, I want to spend the time and money building a state-of-the-art airplane rather than working to upgrade my wonderful yet historic speed machine. So the next step in my mission is to create a short list of candidates for my first build. This short list already includes the classics such as the RV-10 and the Sling TSI. But just recently, I was introduced to another option an option that I've never heard of previously, but has such impressive specs that I just have to learn more. This of course is the BD-4C. The BD-4C is the latest iteration of the BD-4 from BD Corp and famous designer Jim Beattie. BD Corp claims the BD-4 
was the first real kit plane in the world, with the first kits being sold in 1968. I can't understand how I'm just learning about this airplane. The BD-4 specs seem to be almost unbelievable, like there has to be a catch. Perhaps the catch is, it's just not the prettiest airplane in the sky. BD Corp states on their website, the BD-4 does not have the best reputation as a pretty bird. The fuselage is somewhat boxy. Let's dig into some of the specs as published on the manufacturer's website, jimbeatty.com. For this comparison, I'm only going to reference the 180 horsepower numbers, as that's comparable to the Mooney I'm flying today. So on the BD-4C, the useful load comes in at 1,150 pounds, with a fuel capacity of 51 to 80 gallons, depending on the choice you make. At 51 gallons, that leaves 844 pounds of people and baggage. Pretty respectable. Cruise speed is stated as 183 miles an hour at 75% power. That's 159 knots. Or 174 miles an hour at 65% power. Or 151 knots. Again, this is using a 180 horsepower variant. You can increase the horsepower to get more speed. But of course, you'll burn more fuel. The rate of climb is published at 1,400 feet per minute. It doesn't state at what weight or conditions, but I'm guessing that's not fully loaded. Takeoff and landing distances are published at 600 feet. Again, I'm curious at what weight, but impressive nonetheless. The range is 1,026 statue miles, which is all well and good, except I only have about a 600 mile bladder. So pit stops will be required before running out of range. I'd also like to highlight a few other specs that caught my eye. It appears that the wings are foldable and only take up seven feet when folded. This means I could completely build the airplane in my garage and easily trailer it to the airport. The wings are on top of the airplane. Who'd have thought a fast, efficient, high wing airplane? I've never heard of such a thing. The airplane can be configured with either a tricycle or conventional gear. Pretty neat to have the option. The cabin width is 46 inches. This is wider than nearly any certified general aviation four place you're gonna find with the exception of Cirrus airplanes. There are options to have 51 gallons of fuel or up to 80 gallons. Combined with the three engine options, this lets you tailor your airplane exactly to your mission. Finally, I wanna point out that at low gross weight, the airplane is rated at nine Gs, both positive and negative. To me, that means pull that stick as hard as you can. So let's dig into just how much this might cost to build. If you're able to get over the boxy appearance, you'll definitely build the most cost-effective four-place cross-country machine that I'm aware of. Here are the kit prices compared to the RV-10 and Sling TSI, as they are my other leading candidates. A disclaimer, these prices are without an engine, prop, and avionics. You can expect those additions to easily cost you an extra $100,000. I've also listed the prices without any quick build or any additional assistance. That, that way we just look at an apples to apples comparison. So the Vans RV-10, which I think is kind of the benchmark for four place home built airplanes is priced at $57,625. While the Sling TSI fetches a whopping $69,217. The BD-4C seems to be a steal at $32,829. That's 25 grand less than its closest competitor. It's also worth mentioning that with a little sleuthing, you're likely to find a good deal on a Lycoming 0360 for half the price of a Rotax 915 IS found in the Sling or the IO540 in the RV10, which both cost around 45 grand. So today I've covered what might just be the best option for a four-place cross-country kit plane. And I've compared them a little bit 
to what we'll call the industry standards. Let me know in the comments below, what out of those three airplanes would you choose? Or is there an even better option that I've missed altogether? Thanks again for being here. Go find your time to fly. And I'll see you next time.